So open your Bibles and we're going to start in the book of Colossians, chapter 3. We'll take it from there. Wow, 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 wow. Man, this is going to bless you. And I'm excited for it as well because this is fresh. It's like fresh, fresh bread. Fresh from Evan's bakery. All right, Colossians 3. Can I just read this to you today from this translation? So you, it won't sound anything like yours, but I'm just going to read it for you. Sit back and enjoy it. Let the words minister to you. And um, if you want to read with, it's okay. Um, but I'd, I'd recommend just, just listen. Listen how beautiful this transla- translation p- puts it. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. That is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yeah, I love this. Thank you, Jesus. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. And as Christ himself is seen for those, um, is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed. For you are now one with him in his glory. And I love the words now, that it puts the emphasis on now. Man, we always have this thing of one day, one day, one day, one day. We postpone the beautiful, precious treasures of his word that are supposed to be possessed now and we postpone it no we don't we possess it jesus thank you father um listen to this verse 10 it says you have acquired new creation life which is constantly being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you giving you the full revelation of god in this new creation life your nationality makes no difference or your ethnicity education or economic status they matter nothing for it is christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us i love this now listen to what it says you are always and dearly loved by god so robe yourselves with the virtues of god That's verse 12. Just check in the Colossians 3 verse 12 in the Amplified what it says there. Colossians 3 12. Clothe yourselves. Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. Clothe yourselves. The book of Romans, I think it's 13 verse 14 or 14 verse 13, one of the two. It says, put on Christ. You know, wear Christ. Clothe yourself with Christ. Wear Christ. Wear it. Wear it. So, mm, I wonder if I must use the board. Let's, let's use it. Can you get the board for me? Thank you, Jay. So, I've been on this journey, like saying, Lord, who, how do I get people to understand identity and who they are in Christ Jesus? Who we are really in Christ? Um, so, hopefully today, hopefully today, you're going to get a fresh revelation of who you are and it's going to make sense to you. So, I was having a chat with the youth on Friday um, about personality. So, if you don't, the word personality is the word persona in the Greek. And you know what that means? It means it's a mask. It means it's fake. It's not real. That personality is just a mask. Now I know that we have a uniqueness and we have character and we have things that make us unique and who we are. But personality is a mask. Something that you put on. You know, that's why for those of you who got kids in school, you go to a parents' meeting and you can't understand why you're the teacher 
be so upset with your kid, but your, your kid is so behaved at home. He's an angel at home, but he's a devil <laughs> at school. No, I'm saying that we put on personalities like a mask. And so someone can know you differently than what someone else knows you. And I, I understand that. I always say, especially I relate to it, um, we always understood that like a kid can go from, some of you guys are still in high school, will be able to relate. The moment you switch from grade 7, you go to grade 8. One of the prefects that were prefect in, in grade 7 becomes one of the naughtiest guys at school. And it's like his personality changes. And you don't understand what's happening with your kid. You know, teenage years is, is one of the most difficult times for people because all of a sudden your kid is trying on different masks and he doesn't know who he is. So he's, he comes home and he's like, no, I don't understand who you are. Where did this kid come from? And all of a sudden, we're left with, with an identity crisis. Do you guys hear what I'm, what I'm saying? So, so stick with me. So personality is just a mask. So I love how the Bible says, clothe yourself with Christ. Clothe yourself with Christ. Why does He want you to clothe yourself with Christ? Why does He want you to put on Christ? Because that's who you are in Christ Jesus. That's your true nature. That's what He wants people to see when they see you. is Christ. And we have a way of pressure. We call it peer pressure. Is when we, um, when we are amongst a group of people, we change in order to fit or to be accepted. Or to... You know, to, so the pressure comes and we put on a personality to cope with the pressure or to be accepted. But Christ wants us to be above it. So you get a thermometer and you get a thermostat. Remember the old analogy. A thermometer is set by the temperature. And a lot of us approach life as thermometers. Where God has actually designed us to be thermostats. A therm thermometer is set by the temperature. A thermostat sets the temperature. And God wants you to set the temperature. God wants you to set the atmosphere around you. But you can only do that if you know who you are. If you don't know who you are, then you're a thermometer. And you'll be set by temperatures, by peer pressure, by all kinds of pressure, and you'll re react and respond to that. But if you are a thermostat, which is how God designed you to be, it's going to be different. So we need to put on, we need to put on Christ. Yeah. And ain't that an interesting thing? How do I put on Christ? How do I wear Christ? So this is, this is cool. So this, this um, man, I've stood by the graves of so many people. One of, the, one of the, the things that I pick up when I stand in front of a corpse, and it's always like that. It's like I look at his body, but I realize that's not him. That's not him. That's not, he's not there, you know. Um, what is this body? I know we look at each other and I say, I look at Donato and that's Donato. But Don Donato, that's just his body. I've got a phone. This is my phone. Okay? So, there's a my before the phone. The my is the me. The phone is something else. So you came here today, you came in a car, you drove in a car. The car is not you. It's your car. This is your body. So how do you identify who you are? You understand? You're in a body, and I know the, the body is also, it's part of your being, it's part of who you are, but who are you? Who does this body belong to? So I think, I, I believe, this week we spoke about 
um, at this conference. Oh, it was so good. And this guy started explaining, he took from 1 Corinthians 15. And he started speaking about how God says there's a kind of flesh for the stars, there's a kind of body for the stars, excuse me, kind of flesh for animals, kind of flesh for birds. And, and all of this comes from a seed. So when a seed is planted, there comes a tree. Okay, and so it comes from the seed. Now, if you get, you get a cat. A cat has a child. It becomes, you, what do you call the child? <laughs> Kitten. Or a little cat. <laughs> small cat. If you get a big dog, a dog has a puppy, it's a small puppy. But it's the same kind. Problem is with humans is we, we have this, this kind where God said, let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness. And we've never understood it. We the human beings with an identity crisis. We do not know who we are. And until we actually know that we are actually of a God kind. We're of His kind. You know, you're not just a human being. Inside of you, there is, there is something that is like God. There is a God kind in you. And he said, let's make mankind in our image and after our likeness. And I think since the fall of Adam, we've lost our identity. We don't understand what kind we are. All right. Part of it is your mind. Okay. It's your, it's your thinking. Now, yeah, every time I say your, your, your mind, your thoughts, you know, is your mind really you? Is your thoughts really you? Okay, how deep do we go? You know, it gets really confusing. But think about this quickly. Your thoughts. Tell me what are you going to think next? Did you see you don't know what you're going to think next? We don't know what we're going to think next. But if I tell you, if I tell you something about a house, all of a sudden, your, your thoughts can go in a direction and it can start creating things and you can put things together. So your, your mind is programmed. You are the result of your thinking. That everything that you've seen, everything that's, that's come in contact with you, every feeling, every victory, every triumph, every disappointment, every failure is there in your thoughts. And we become a product of that. And so when I tell you, what are you going to think next? You can't tell me what you're going to think next. But if I say, if I say, husband, some of you guys would think of someone that's awesome and some, something that's amazing. Someone has got a different story. A different and it triggers all kinds of different things in your imagination and in your mind and and what's up here is going to um, I won't I won't use dictate but let's borrow the word dictate how you live your life does it make sense so we become a victim of our of our of our thoughts but we don't know that we have power over them that we have power over our thought life. And we have to realize that, is that inside of you, there is a God kind. There is a God kind of person. All right, so I was just thinking while I was sitting in this um, conference, they were talking about this baby dog, baby cat. And then I remember the old story about that they took a, 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 a burbu and a, and a vorshond and somehow they managed to connect the two and make puppies. So they didn't know what to call it, so they called it a Burevosh. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. But anyways, it was a letter. So you're a God kind. You're a God kind of person. You're a God kind. One of the things that triggered the Pharisees and the Jews, what they couldn't stand, is the fact that he was the Son of God. They hated it. They hated the idea of Jesus being the Son of God. He said, how can you, a mere man, 
make yourself out to be a God. And Jesus said, but my law, the word, the very law that you read says that you are gods. It's there. You are gods. <laughs> you are gods. You were made in his likeness and after, after him. So we are by nature, we are gods. We are not God, but we are like him. We are gods, not God. Big God, small, small God. Big dog, small dog. <laughs> you are gods. You are, you are made in his likeness. And we need to, in this body, I think what happened with Adam is he fell, he fell, he got an identity crisis and he left the whole world in a state of an identity crisis, not knowing who they are. Is this okay? Good. So this is helpful. So, so think about it. You know, so I had this dream, I think last week. Um, I was reading about, um, if you take um, Jacob's dream, we all know it, and he dreamt of this place, and he dreamt about an, a ladder going up into heaven and angels ascending and descending. And he said, God is in this place. And he said, we will call this place Bethel. But here comes Jesus, and uh, he says to the one, uh, one of the Pharisees, I think, or Sadducee, I can't remember which one. He says, you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And so Jesus became this place. He became this place where God's presence was. Now, I had this dream last week. I dreamt that there was this ladder and I was speaking to an angel in this dream and I was looking down and I saw it looked like I told Anya it, it looks like this there was this dark covering all around this place I thought what is this because I knew that the connection was um, bringing heaven's manifestation but what is preventing it you know what is preventing heaven's manifestation and uh, I looked and all of the, there was like this darkness. And then God started showing me this thing about um, who we are and um, how important our minds are and our thinking is. And uh, I saw it like this was my mind and this was my thoughts and this was all the energies and things that I've been programmed and all the past hurts that I'm allowing to, to drive this vehicle. So think about this as a body, as this body is a car. Who's driving? Who's driving this vehicle? Who's driving this car? Is my past insecurities driving it? And believe me, sometimes my insecurities do drive. And sometimes, my, sometimes I stress. Because I've got to tell you that when, when my bank is full, my bank account is full. Man, it's easy to have God's peace. And when, when everything is going well and there's, all the bills are paid and I've got leftovers, it's so easy to have God's peace. And when there's nothing coming against man, I'm walking in the peace of God. But on the other side of things, when those things are not there, then all of a sudden we have anxiety that takes over the steering wheel. And he starts driving. Peace is gone. Peace is not even in the back seat. Peace is out of the door. And he, and, and, you know, anxiousness. Come on, how many of you guys can relate to what I'm saying? So I don't always walk in 24-7 presence of God, peace of God. But I've got to tell you that each and every one of you have got access to presence of God, to the peace of God. I don't, it don't matter how many scriptures you know, sometimes we want the pastor to get us there. You've got access to it. You've got access to God, to His mercy, to His grace, to the righteousness, to holiness, all of it. Every answer, every prayer, everything that you need, you've got access to. And I was thinking about this cycle of thoughts that we believe or we perceive to be truth, but is a lie. Because you have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. All right? So that's good. So personality is only a mask. Um, okay. Check this in. Um, quickly go to Romans. 
Romans chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for words of life. Come on, man. Don't, don't, let, don't let anxiety drive. Don't give him the control. All right. And we're going to go back to Colossians 3 now. No? But Romans chapter 12. I want to read it in the Passion Translation as well. Really, really enjoyed this translation so far. I still prefer the old school, but beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourself to God to be His living sacrifice. Now the Amplified or the King James or anything else that says surrender your body to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. To dedicate your bodies. To sacrifice. Alright, so if this is my phone and I come, I'm giving it to you. All right, I'm sacrificing my phone. All right, and I'm giving him full control of my phone. Now, in the same way, I need to take my body, and I love how it says that you sacrifice. Sacrifice actually almost sounds like you kill something, but he says make a living sacrifice. Ooh, it's beautiful. And so, what I'm doing is I'm taking my car and I'm just drive. I'm, I'm letting go of this. Drive. Here is, here is my body. Here is my mind. Here is my thoughts. Here is my will. Everything about me. Yours. Here I am, God. Use me. Does that make sense? So, now you're in a state of anxiousness. Now you're, you're struggling. I need to say, Lord, I, <laughs> I dedicate my body to you. I dedicate my life to you. And I step out of that that cycle of thoughts I say okay you drive you take the wheel all right keep your finger there and go to Col back to Colossians 3 we'll start with verse 12 again Lord come on let your word hit home today clothe yourself therefore as God's own chosen ones who are purified and holy well beloved by putting on behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy kind feeling low opinion of yourself I just want to say today the whole world wants to see miracles signs and wonders you know what I want to see gentleness kindness meekness I want to see someone being kind to you. I want to see people extending a hand to each other obviously we want to see the sick healed we want to see all of that but I want to see kind people I want to see happy people. I want to see people with, with this kind of fruit of Christ. Be gentle. Verse 13. Forbearing with one another. Wouldn't that be a, a miracle today? And he says, verse 14. Above all these, put on love and enfold yourself with a bond of perfectness. And let the peace, the harmony which comes from Christ, rule in your hearts. Woo! Amplified says it, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind and in that peaceful state. I love that. Did you see what it says? It acts as umpire. So if you watch the sports game, you have the umpire that decides. This is how it's going to go. You're out. You're in. That was wrong. And, and he says, what's the umpire? Peace. Peace must be your umpire. The peace, and not just any peace, the peace of God. The peace of God. Um, Carl Lenz, I love, him, love his stuff. He says, I've got peace in my pocket all the time. You've got access to that peace. And you need to make every decision of your, in your life with that peace. With that peace of God. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? I'm going to let peace, the peace of God decide that. If I can make a decision within the peace of God, and the peace of God allows me to make this decision, then it'd be good. That's, that's what's so good about scriptures like be slow to speak. 
keep quiet. Don't react so fast. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. First, get peace. When Jesus sent out his disciples, the first thing that he said, say to them, peace in this home. Peace. Peace. I need peace in every, in every action. Then he says, and it love. Put on love. And let the peace of God. Very, very easy to explain. Simple. Uh, um, Donaldo, can you come here? You. With your phone. Think of it like this. Here's the peace of God. Go sit down. Why are you going without the peace of God? Aha. With every action, you keep the peace of God in your life. Before I'm going to make a big decision, what do you want? Peace. First get peace. I cannot go if I don't get peace. I'm going to be slow on this. You know, I was in a, in a debate. I don't do debates, but I like to answer questions. And they were answering me. They were answer, asking me really difficult questions that were challenging my faith. And uh, so I just told them, I don't have an answer now, but I will. And I, so if I had responded, I would have probably done the wrong thing. But I waited until I had an answer. And then when I had the answer, full force. Okay? Peace. Wait on the peace of Christ. Amen? So these are the kind of things that we want <laughs> to rule in our minds. We do not want to be a victim of the thoughts and the cycles of things that's, be, that's going on up here. Alright, so Romans chapter 12. Go back. Romans 12 verse 2. You know it. Man, this is a good one. So I'm really, you know what I find myself? Mondays are such a hard day. Especially once you've said all things are possible with God. And, you, and you've preached one of the most amazing messages on Sundays and Monday hits you. And then you're usually like, Lord, why did I preach what I preached? Oh my goodness, why did I do that? And that is not God's word. I'm not allowing God's word to rule in my, in my mind. I just heard a message and now Monday hits and I become a victim of these pressures that everybody is feeling and everybody is experiencing. I need these words to override what's happening in my mind. And, and that, that is really what we need to do. It sounds hard, but it, it's not. It's a choice. So I'm not going to take that thought. I'm not going to think like that. I'm not going to let anxiety drive. I'm going to let the Word of God drive. Come on, this is, this is applicable. This is what we, we need to do. So Romans 12 verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. What are we transforming to? Christ. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, as we behold, the word of God is in a mirror. We are transformed. We need to think like Christ. You need to think like Christ. Come on, man. You know, it's amazing. Um, the, the world takes a principle of renewing your mind and gets results like this. I always say, because the church doesn't believe that we belong here, we're just passing through, that we don't lay hold of, the, of these principles and experience and enjoy the grace that comes with it. Um, you can see it, you can have a smart guy that stays poor his whole life. And you can have an idiot that gets rich. It's just funny how it works. It's a mindset, a cycle that he's stuck in that he doesn't break. Yeah. It's not that, he, that the idiot has to get smarter. He understands how to think. But the smart guy has got a, has got a mentality and things that's a cycle of things that's happened to him. You need to break that. Now, people do that in, in the secular world and see results. They start telling you, well, let's get affirmations and let's start saying the right things about yourself. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I can, I can, I am, I am, and they start doing it. 
And Jesus, God gives us the same principle, and He's saying, hey, but this is actually who you are. You are my child. Now I need you to think like it. And we need to start thinking like it. I think I can, although I don't know if I can, until I think I can. Wait, I can do this. And then you find yourself doing it. And we need to, we need to pick these things, these thoughts up, and say, this is the set of, this is a lie from the enemy. I can do this in Christ Jesus. So we need to transform, be transformed by the renewing of, my, of, of your mind. I'm switching over to this beautiful translation. Love it. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. So, come Monday. Monday is going to hit. Monday is going to come. And you need to stop that cycle of thoughts because it does not define who you are. And I was challenging myself, you know. I stood, um, I stood this week and someone came to ask me to, to pray for someone that had passed away. And now I'm thinking to myself, oh no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I already know nothing's going to happen if I go. That's my own cycle of thoughts. It's not God's word. And I need to get that cycle of thoughts and these past experiences completely out. And I need to allow Christ to drive in here. <laughs> Say, Christ, come take my thoughts. Give me, your, give me your thoughts. I saw this jewel today in 1 John 5, yesterday, last night. 1 John chapter 5. And it's one that we can be so, we can be so religious about. One John five is fourteen in the Amplified. Check it out. And this is the confidence which we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His world, according to His word or His will, He listens to and hears us. How do you like that? So He goes in with confidence now. Most people, when they hear that, we will not be confident. We will be, what's the opposite of confident? We will be, we will doubt. Let's just use doubt. Oh, I don't know if God wants this. <laughs> I want to open up a business, but Lord, I don't know if we want this. And he says, here's the key. If you know his will. If you know his will. The problem is we don't know his will. How do we know His will? By His Word and by His Spirit. Then I will know His will. If I understand that God, if I don't understand that God wants us to prosper, how can I go to God and say, Lord, prosper me? I don't know His will. But if I am renewing my mind by His thoughts, I will understand that He takes pleasure in the prosperity of His servants. And that I can go, Father, I thank you for prosperity. This business will prosper. These ideas will prosper. I am a son of God. I will. And I can go and I can thank him that he hears me and that he listens to me. But I have to renew my mind. You have to come out of the victim and come into the victor. We have to do it. We have to apply it. So by the Spirit, we can do these things. Come on, someone. I hope you feel challenged and I hope you feel like, I got this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, you know, you take anything. I'm going to use running, for example. If you've never jogged 2Ks before, 2 kilometers, it sounds like it's very far. If you've never done it. But it really is not far. It really is not far. It's just that you think it's far. And it's not. The moment you've gone... And you've taken a step. I'm going to try. And you go. I'm telling you, before you know it, two kilometers is nothing. And you feel ashamed that you thought it was once such a big giant. It's not nothing. And it's anything like that. Um, so don't be a victim of, don't let this mind, you know, 
be a victim. It's not who you are. The thought is not who you are. These thoughts that you're thinking, you have to realize it's not you. It's my thoughts. So I need to think different thoughts. I have to override these thoughts by allowing God, God's thoughts to come in. And that's only by meditation and by thinking it and by overriding it. So pick it up. The moment you feel a bit negative, it wants to drive. It wants to be in control. Stop it. Say, get, get behind me, Satan. I'm not going to think like this. The devil's temptation kept on saying, if, you, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God. On Monday, I get that exact same temptation. Oh, man of God, now you preach such a wonderful word, but look at you now. It's challenging your identity, who you are in Christ. And you need to, and you need to reply by knowing what's written in the word and say, this is who I am in Christ Jesus. We've got to do it, man. I was, I was, um, when I read, I, I found myself in this, and I'm just going to give you some of, I always like to give testimonies, and sometimes I'll share some of my weaknesses and some of the mistakes that I've made that we can all learn from it, but one of the things that I'm, um, I told God, I don't know how to preach a message and believe for a mediocre life. I don't know how to take the words of God and preach that you are not involved supernaturally and that I cannot expect miracles like this. I need to preach and I need to, I need to speak the impossible and I need, I need to feel it, I need to yearn, I need to ache inside of me and I need to go for it with everything inside of me. That's what I want, Father. If I want to preach this word, you know, help me. And, I, and one of the things that I'm, that I'm going to break in my life is my cycle of thoughts. That I find myself in all the same patterns and the same thing of thinking and I will not be allow these cycles to dictate who I am. I will go stand in front of dead bodies because the Bible says that we can raise them until I see them raised. I've seen them raised but I've never prayed for someone. I've seen people pray and they come back. I've seen it. And the person with an experience is not at the, uh, the mercy of someone with an opinion. <laughs> so, uh, I believe all things are possible and I'm going to go for it. I think it was Steve Jobs who said it was, it was the people that, that believe that anything is, is, is possible are the ones who change the world. I'm a world changer. I'm, I'm made and I'm making one on behalf of you. We're made in the image of God after His likeness. Yes. He died to reconcile all things to Himself. Yes. He wants His kingdom to come, His will to be done in it. He needs people that's going to believe and gonna take the word and allow this thing to be washed yes. and to be renewed. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. So, thank you Jesus. If we ask anything according to His will, Guys, this is the life of the Word. When, when we preach, we're not trying to give information. Information you can do nearly nothing with. You need to hear a Word that imparts life. You need to hear a Word that's busy challenging you, that's transforming you, that says, that's the side I want to be on. That's where I want to run. I don't want to play victim anymore. And we've, even our doctrines are bad because our doctrines can give us that victim mentality. <laughs> Lord, come fetch us, please. We can't handle this. No, he says, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. I've caused you to triumph in all things. It's all over in the scriptures. We can do it. Amen? Amen. All right. So quickly, quickly if, if we on the finishing line. We go to Ephesians chapter 5. This, I always say, I want, I want us to be supernaturally or naturally supernatural. Um, I want to be relevant and real to the people around me. I don't want to be weird and freak them out. 
I want to be real and I want to be powerful. The gifts of God, they are, they are powerful. They're not weird. You know, they're not weird. You can be powerful behind your computer in your office without freaking everyone out. <laughs> you can. You can, you can. You can be in the spirit, see visions, dream dreams. But at a place like this, you guys can freak out. <laughs> you can fall on your face. You can kick the chairs. <laughs> you can run around. I'm just saying, let's be real. Let's be relevant. Bill Johnson, Uncle Bill, he features in, in all of my, my messages. It is a blessing. He says, when someone tells you that... Um, If you're too heavenly minded, you have no earthly good. He says, put it down as deception. He says, you're only of any earthly good when you're heavenly minded. We need heavenly minded people, thinkers, that don't think like everybody else. Come on. Amen. I said Ephesians, ne? Ephesians chapter 5. Galatians. Remember how to go to Ephesians? Because you get the Galatians, the Colossians, the Philippians. So if you just remember the general electrical power corporation, you know Ephesians is by the electrical. And so you pass by the general to get to Ephesians. Good. Ephesians 5. I hope you're enjoying the word. I hope that while I'm preaching that inside of you it says it does something and that you're burning. And you're like, yeah. That's who I am. All right. I'm going to start with verse 25. The B part says, just says, it says husbands, but we're not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about Christ. It says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Verse 26 now. So that he may sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word he cleanses you he cleanses you you need what I found what works in a bad cycle of thoughts it's not who you are who you are is his bride you are pure you are you are already purified you can't make yourself pure you can't he makes you pure <laughs> he washes you in his blood you're, you can't try and be good enough to be pleased, to be accepted by Him. You are already His bride. I want you to remember that you're not His bride-to-be. You are His bride. You are married to Christ. You are one with Him. But sometimes we get exposed to things. And we get exposed to, to things that, that hit us here. That give us a, Lord, why? I don't understand this. Or maybe you see something or someone puts on a TV and you see a, something you don't want to see. Or Then he comes and he says, hey, allow me to wash you with the word. And you come sit and you just listen. And the word washes you, builds you up and it gives you an inheritance. That's it. That's your responsibility. That's what we've got to do. And we've got to stay hungry. And we've got to stay foolish. And we need to pursue um, these gifts and the things that God has for us. All right, so I'm just going to speak this over you. You are the church. You are the bride of Jesus Christ. You are washed in His blood. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are a peculiar people. <laughs> you are set apart. Right? You are His child. You are His daughter. You are His son. He's mad about you. And He loves you. And He's more eager to answer your prayers than what you are to ask them. And He'll never leave you. And He'll never forsake you. You are a new creation. You are not what you think you are. You are more than what you think you are. Your true nature is hidden in Christ Jesus. That's why his word says, when he appears, you appear with him in glory. He doesn't appear solo. He appears with you. 
in glory. Right now, I just speak to everyone's hearts. If you have disappointment, if you have hurt, if you're struggling with a cycle of thoughts, it does not define who you are. It is not who you are. These words that I've been speaking, that is the truth of who you are. When He sees you, He's in love. So Father, I thank you for everyone. You know everybody's hearts. You know what's going on inside. Lord, today we choose life. We choose what you, what you say. We trust you. And we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Take my mind. Take my will. Take, take my body. And, and have your way. Have your way in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, so in your business, it doesn't mean you have to give up your business. It means you need to let Christ run your business. <laughs> and you can only allow Christ to run your business if you know what He wants. It's simple. If you know His will and you know His ways. Gentleness. Patience. Love. That's your true nature. Amen. All right. Paul says, No longer I that live, but it's Christ that is alive in me. So you're not trying to be like Christ, you're allowing him to live in you. Amen. Amen.